gift wrapping skill level one originated in 2015. I was actually on the ta on the um, GC committee that we approved this honor. I was that part of that group when this one came through. I was so happy when I saw it. Okay, let's see if we can get it to click forward. There we go. My computer is lagging just a little bit here. Uh, it's, uh, it's preparing for the break as well, Mark. Yes. So you should see a green bag with a big red circle on it. Do that's you see right. that? Yeah, that's what, it. What does the big red circle mean? It means no, no. No, 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 no. This is not the gift bagging honor. Gift bagging is an activity. It takes no brains, no forethought, no talent, no experience. All it takes is a bag. <laughs> and we're not gift bagging here. Ban on gift bagging. Because see, gift bagging says normal, and I really didn't think and prepare for you ahead of time. Whereas gift wrapping says you are extraordinary, and I thought about you from the very beginning. So we're focusing on the thoughts and the intentionality. Now you're going to need a whole bunch of stuff and Ms. Natalie emailed this list to you. Um, we do not, you know, obviously if you don't have all the stuff, we YouTube these, right? So you can go back and you can say, oh, I'm going to go to the, go to the market, go to the store tomorrow. Then I'll play back the YouTube and catch all the pieces I didn't catch today. No problem, it's there. I'm also going to be demonstrating stuff in just a little bit and I'm going to be going very fast. We only have an hour. So you will not have time. If you like get behind or make a mistake, don't worry about it. Do your best to finish up, but know that you can come back and improve your skills. You can come back and watch again, look again, get to make sure you have the supplies, make sure you do it right this time, whatever. No problem. That's one of the great things about Pastor Dayon's methodology here. He has posted to YouTube with all the links to everything so that you can come back and try again or improve your improve your process. But there's a whole list of things that we can use for wrapping. One of the cool things, and I, um, actually I'll talk to you about that in a moment. This is for wrapping, and wrapping really has two parts. It has what you wrap, and it has the bows that you put on the outside. And together, you have a gift. Now, I wanna show you a couple of the gifts that we have here. I have this gift and actually can you is it big enough to see pastor day on or should uh, we, I wait to present it? we can see we can see the box uh but we cannot see too much of what is on that uh, on that box okay then i'll come back and i'll show you the boxes in just a moment okay let's just slow it. i've already told you about the history in the background see those papers on the left those are some original uh they're not papers actually cloth wrappings that they found from the 1400s in china those are um, cloth remnants that were used as gifts. And I've already told you the, the Hall brothers story. Um, there's what is called furoshiki in Japan. They like the fact that they use cloth instead of paper because it's eco. Um, you can use the cloth again multiple times. Um, you don't have to throw anything away. Okay, so let's think about some courtesy rules. And there's two parts giving and receiving. How do you demonstrate courtesy, respect, honor, care, those kind of things, when you give and when you receive? So for giving, one of the ways that we are courteous is by trying to match the gift to the person we are giving it to. That takes some thought sometimes, doesn't it? I mean, yes. some people are <laughs> really, really hard to buy for. And sometimes the more you know them, the harder they are to buy for because you know all the things that they don't like or all the things that they already have. But thinking through how to match the receiver. Now, here's a big one. Don't expect a return gift. Hmm. Not always the easiest way, huh? No, but it actually frees you to just give from your heart and not worry about anything. You don't have to stress about Mark, can I just pose a question for everybody who is at the moment watching this with us? Uh, um, 
it's just those to viewers did you guys ever you know wrap a gift and you gave it without no expectation that you will receive anything back and also in the meantime maybe you'd like to tell us what is the most beautiful gift that you received uh, so that we can just share with everybody else just use the chat and comment section guys What are some of the answers we're getting? Uh, I'm uh, waiting for this. Uh, we're still admitting people who are joining us uh, slightly later. Uh, so chat. Oh, somebody says no. I. Uh, they. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Anybody else? Um, did you guys ever give a gift? Or oh, what was the most beautiful gift that you ever received? Or maybe have you given a gift in secret without the person knowing that you were giving the gift, who it was they were getting it from? Mark, we will just wait. For, we will wait for the answers as you are continue. Oh, uh, somebody received or gave a doctor set. That would be like the best gift for my daughter. She was, she has one, and she's, she wants to be a doctor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. My 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 daughter says that one of the best gifts she's ever gotten is um, a camera. She likes to take pictures, much like her dad and brother do. So she was blessed with a camera last Christmas. Wow, beautiful. I know that I especially enjoy receiving gifts that are handmade or homemade. Yep. Those have a high value for me. Um, Absolutely, I'm the same. Because I know, because I make gifts as well sometimes, so I know how much work has gone into it. Yep. So it means a lot when you receive it. Yep. I'll tell you what, one, 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 one type of gift that I give that I really hope nobody returns to me in kind is food. When I give food away, that's calories out the door that I don't have to eat. I don't want calories in return. I just want to give. I like to do preserving and canning. Yes, I have the preserving and canning on her. Um, love to give preserves, especially at Christmas, like pickles or relishes or jams and jellies, um, those kind of things. So I love to give those. I don't want people giving me calories back. That's a great <laughs> thing to just not expect to return. It's my way. <laughs> uh, I don't know how to make chocolate. Sorry. Uh, oh, awesome. Somebody, somebody saying they gave a teddy bear for Secret Santa. That's cool. So, so somewhere, so somewhere far away, somebody enjoyed is or enjoyed or is enjoying that teddy bear. And you won't know who it is until you get to heaven. Cool stuff. Something, number four on giving is follow price ranges. Maybe you've been invited to a um, gift exchange or maybe your school back when we had school in session kind of stuff, we would do a um, gift exchange idea where you got to play music and then you could choose to unwrap a gift or take the gift that somebody else had already unwrapped that was sitting in front of them or one of those kind of games. If you're participating in one of those type of things, make sure that if the organizer of the, of the party said, make sure that it's five to $10 or, or not, I guess for you guys, it would be what, two to five pounds maybe. Um, so if they give you a price range, stick with it because there's nothing quite so awkward or uncomfortable as showing up and the gift that you made that, that you gave or that you gave secretly is like the most valuable one. It kind of makes everything else unfair for everybody else and just, it's uncool, it doesn't feel good. So stick with those price ranges. And always remember it's better to give than to receive. So that's on the giving side. On the receiving side, it could all be boiled down to be thankful and show that you're thankful. Of course, there's some parts to that like, Read the card that might be attached on the outside. Take time to notice what the gift is. Say out loud some of the things you like about the gift. Say thank you. Be polite. Don't go. There's time to open the next gift. Slow down. Um, and finally, send a thank you note. I know my, my daughter, she had her birthday just a few days ago. And so she's busy writing thank you notes to the people who gave her birthday gifts. Mark. So, as as you were just you know just before you said that um, uh, we have Alex who wrote us in the chat here in the Zoom who said it's better to it's better uh, to give than to receive so 
we're on the same page there as well. So thank you, Alex, for your comment. The next requirement, this is requirement 2A, says collect different types of wrapping paper, at least 10 grades, five by seven centimeters, two by three inches in size. So I wanna show you different types. We'll do gift wrapping in just a moment, but here's some different types. Um, I have, and actually, I may unshare here so I can, uh, there's types of wrapping materials. I wanted to show it to you. So give me just a moment here, let me unshare my screen. Okay, is that better? Can you see me now? Yes, we can. Okay, so for example, I'm gonna go through food ones first because yes, I enjoy receiving food. See this, see this um, uh, sweet bread? Wow. This is wrapped. This is from my mother. She makes a very special Adventist approved mm. fruitcake every year. There's no spirits in it, never were, but it is <laughs> delicious. Your, oh my your, your daughter is, can't wait to open that box, it seems to me. <laughs> yes, but that's wrapped. Notice it looks like aluminum foil. It's actually two. There's a wax paper and an uh, aluminum foil. Aluminum foil just looks good and looks professional. The wax paper keeps it fresh. So here we have aluminum foil. That could be one of the ones you write down. Um, you have freezer paper, which is the wax or wax paper. You could write down either one or both. Wax paper is a little bit, it's waxed on both sides. Freezer paper is only waxed on one side. But that's a wonderful if you're, especially if you're doing sweet breads like banana bread or um, zucchini bread. If you're making, if you're giving away a pumpkin pie, that waxed side keeps it from sticking to that pumpkin pie or to that apple pie. Uh, do you guys have pumpkins there in, in Great Britain? We do, we do. We're not as crazy on pumpkin pie as you guys are, but um, we do, we do uh, make uh, things from pumpkins. Well, that's good. And there's also, of course, cellophane wrap that you can use as like a plastic bag kind of thing. I can show you it in just a moment on my the decor. Let's go more traditional. We, of course, have gift wrap. Just standard printed gift wrap. We also have another type of gift wrap that's foil based. See how there's kind of a metallic, I wish you could see close up but there's actually, they've used a combination of foil, metal, and paper together. So it's called a two-ply or a foil wrap. There's the old classic that's been around for generations. That's craft paper. Good old craft paper. And it comes, this type comes with lines on the back, so you can cut straight lines really easily. I don't know if you, I don't know if you can see the, can you see the lines there? I can't. Yeah, yeah, small squares. We can uh, see small those. square. Those Excellent. Small squares, yeah. Uh, and those are um, about, uh, I think there's uh, centimeter lines. They may be half inch. Uh, that's close to the same. Um, don't need that one for demo. Um, we also have tissue paper. Notice that's kind of a lightweight, crinkly. That's really handy. We'll actually wrap a gift using tissue paper in just a moment. We have construction paper. You've used construction paper, craft paper in school probably. Then we have some of my favorites. That's the eco-friendly version. We have magazines. Now maybe you have an old Adventist review that you've read all the articles. Yes, we do. We have a lot of Adventist review. Those make a good wrapping. Um, any, any magazine or newspaper that has big, pretty colored pictures, I'm using a seed catalog here, and I always order my seeds online, but they send me a seed catalog anyway. So I like to use that for wrapping. Then of course there's good bags, reused bags, uh, paper bags. Um, I know these days many of us are using recycle bags that have kind of a plasticky kind of thing going on. Yes. But no paper bags available. This one in fact, um, Hold that up right there, Katie. Can you, can you it, looks, it, it looks like it's decorated. We stamped that one with some, some ink and some stamps to make it more decorated. Very uh, cool. Uh, for now, Mark, just for everybody there who's watching on Facebook and here in Zoom, guys, maybe you would like to put some uh, comments on what uh, what recycle thing do you use to wrap your gifts? So, or you know, uh, is that your know, Mark showed you some of what he does and what he uses? Uh, maybe you have some different ideas. 
I had a friend in Jap who used to live in Japan and um, she always used to make envelopes from uh, magazine pages. And so she used to send her letters um, with uh, magazine envelopes um, and they always used so unusual when they came through the post. They really did stand out, look beautiful. Yep. Now the requirement asks that you collect these 10 different wrappings um, in one place. I took a cardboard circle and I simply glued 10 um, squares. Mine were about three inches on a side, so about um, seven centimeters or so um, on each side. It can be five to seven centimeters. Um, but if you glue it to a central, that's a great way to keep track. There's 10. I could have, if I was super, super artsy crafty, it would have looked a little bit more organized. You could also glue them on a board. You could take them and simply create a stack and then use a bow to tie on the top and have your 10 to demonstrate there. It doesn't really matter. It's to expose you to more than just the printed wrapping. You know how we can get really stuck in traditions. And so we can end up always doing it the same way just because we don't know better. This requirement helps us expand our horizons and think outside the box, which are both great things to try. All right. So, so I wanna go back to my screen because I wanna show you a couple more things back on the show. Sounds good. Uh, Mark, as you're going, sharing your screen, uh, Lean said, I placed my presents in a carbon box and then everything disappeared from the screen. And then uh, she explained, or uh, uh, let me just see. Uh, and he simply says, I'm, I do this very clear for Aline says, so that a person who is opening the box, the gift can actually reuse the paper again. That's Beautiful. It's a great way to do it. And on Facebook, I've got Denise who said she uses newspapers to wrap. Yep, especially the funny pages. I, I'm, I imagine you guys have <laughs> funny pages in the newspaper. Yes. Those are especially good. Or the crossword puzzle section. Yeah. yeah. Wrapping with that so that, that none of the clues, make sure if you use crossword puzzle section, make sure you don't get any of the clues cut off or covered with tape. Put it like front and center. Okay, so, um, the page I'm sharing now pretty much summarizes, I've listed 11 different types. Make sure you know of and know how to use or how you could use 10. And there's some ideas. Now, let's think about who we're giving our gift to because the requirement 2B says, choose a suitable gift wrap pattern for wrapping a gift to a child, an adult, a sister, a brother, etc. So for example, I chose, shall we do children first? Can you I, go grab me that one that's really set for children? Yeah, children, yeah. Okay, so actually hand it, show it, turn around and show it off there to the camera. Can you see that? Check that out. Do you see the crayons and the eyeballs on the front of that? <laughs> See the googly eyes. Yeah, it's got googly eyes and a packet of crayons. Can you see those down here? Yep. So we take, yep, yep. we take some crayons because whoever gets this gift can pull out the crayons out of the little bag and finish the googly eye face. Or add ears, add hair. There's space to have fun with this package. That's I love it. I want one like this. <laughs> okay, but Katie, do you think do you think this would work best for um, a kid or a grandma? Which one would probably be better? Kid. She says kid. Do you agree? Sometimes. Probably a kid. My grandma could do, deal with that. Her grandma, if she says that her grandma would probably be okay with it, I'm guessing she's thinking that that would give grandma and Katie something to do together. <laughs> so a great way to think of matching your gift with who's getting it. Of course, food. Make sure the person enjoys the food. Like, like Miss Natalie, since I know you like chocolate, I would make sure to wrap chocolate. I probably wouldn't risk fruitcake on you because I don't know if you like it. I'm, I'm not a major fan of raisins, I'm going to tell you. but um. And see, matching the gift to the giver, you make sure you know so that you don't give a gift that's not appreciated. Yeah, yes. Um, some other ways, like, like this one. Katie, can you hold that one up for them? 
She's got the one where we recycled the seeds catalog magazine. Um, that would be a great gift for me because I'm a gardener. Absolutely. Or for my bro or for my son, he's a gardener. Um, we would send, and Katie's looking at me going, I garden too. Yeah, I know you got the gardening award recently, <laughs> didn't you? Yeah. And so see, um, you match the gift to the person receiving. That kind of wrapping would go over big in our family. We like to garden. We could have all of our gifts wrapped in that and we'd be good because we'd spend half the day reading the different descriptions of different types of radishes and tomatoes and corn that are available that we might want to buy the seeds to. Okay, so go ahead and take these two away, Katie, out of our screen. Katie showed me her stamps um, that she used to stamp the brown paper and the craft paper comes in brown or white, but ink pads, stamps, makes for great fun with some of that craft paper wrapping. Um, if you were, and here's a good chat question, um, if you were thinking of the perfect wrapping for your mom and dad, or your grandma and grandpa, or your sibling, or a fellow Pathfinder, do something for me in the chat line. Tell me, first of all, who you're wrapping this gift for and what you would make sure the wrapping looked like that you think would be really cool. All right. A couple of minutes, because you have to brainstorm. I'll give it a whole two minutes. No problem, maybe even three. Think about how do you find the perfect wrapping for your gift? That's not what's inside. That's what you're wrapping it with. How do you make sure that the wrapping matches your person? I guess so you have to think of the person first and then the gift. And yep. then you have to think of the wrapping. So guys, it's up to you. We'll look out for what you've got on the chat. Hmm. Mark, I think we need to ask, have you done all of your Christmas wrapping yet? I have done none of my Christmas wrapping. <laughs> now I have all the supplies since I, I, I went to the store a few days ago to purchase for this for this teaching. So now I have all the supplies to do it. Excellent. You've got a little helper to do it too. I've got a little one to help me. So, you know, I know. That's true. That's true. So I've got a ways to go, but I've got five whole days to do it. So I'm good. Well done. That's all the time in the world. It is. So have you figured out who you're, who, who you would want to wrap a gift for and what you might do to make that gift special? All right. So Facebook's coming up faster than Zoom at the moment. So somebody has said, Nabi has said she would wrap something for her daughter and she would use it. Um, some, she would wrap it in her favorite color. So she would choose the wrapping in the, her daughter's favorite color. So I guess that's oh, my interesting. Good. I would do the same thing for Katie's favorite color is orange. You know that she'll get at least one wrapped orange gift. It's harder to find orange wrapping paper, but I get it. I manage it every once in a while. Oh, well done. Either one. Go ahead and put that on. Hey, bring that one over here. And can you bring the candy wrapper striping paper? Mm -hmm. Candy striping. Oh, you mean candy. Oh, Denise has said you she'd use burlap and twill to wrap uh, to give her gift a unique look. There we go. Now, my guess that would be especially cool if the person she was wrapping for um, had a rural farm um, background. I know my my grandfather would have loved that kind of thing because he would have then been able to tell me stories of the good old days of the farm. <laughs> and Bianca has said she'd wrap something for her dad. We just see, um, heard from Bianca earlier today. She'd wrap something for her dad with brown paper with very neat folds. There we go. There we go. Well. See, you've, you've guessed the list that I had here. Uh, favorite colors, uh, age, um, boy or girl, because you probably wouldn't want to, uh, you wouldn't want to probably put pink paper for your brother's gift. Probably not a good idea. And of course, many interests. Yep, good things to think about. Okay, are we ready for some demonstrations? Oh, yes. Can't wait. Somebody from Wimbledon is saying, one of our churches here who's saying, can't wait to 
learn how to do it. So I think they're all waiting for this bit, Mark. Okay, well, we're here. First one's the easiest one. Okay, just a second. One, two, the box, the classic box wrap. Now here's kind of a trick. Okay, some principles are make sure that as you fold, that you're folding sharp, crisp corners. You know those skills you learned when you were drilling marching that you turn the short corner sharply? Think of doing that same kind of precision with your folds. That origami skill of making the crease extra good. Yeah, make sure you get that. Another secret of the trade, where is our tape, Katie? Oh, here it is, you already have it for me. The there's single-sided tape, which is not ideal for gift wrapping because it shows. Then there's double-sided tape. It's sticky on both sides. This is ideal because that way when you're all done, you don't see the tape. Now I'm re recycling a Splenda box. And here's how I figure out how big a piece of paper I need. Watch this. I start at the edge. I make sure I have a good clean edge and I make sure that I roll it. And I'm gonna actually roll this way because I've got more paper this way. I'm gonna roll here. So I get all four sides plus a little bit. So see how I have about, I have about four centimeters over there, uh, 40 millimeters. Do you do centimeters or millimeters, Miss Natalie? Uh, we do either, okay. we're okay with both. Okay, and then you go here and you say, okay, what gets me halfway and a little bit? So on the end, halfway and a little bit, and you roll your box to make sure you have enough. So then I cut on the same amount on the other side. And then the goal is to cut a straight line. Some people, if you have really sharp set of scissors, you can start, then you can just kind of start to push the scissors and it will automatically make your line. Sometimes you have to wiggle the scissors a little bit. That's okay to keep it rolling. But you want a straight line all the way to the end. Then you arrange your box and here's a trick. You see the side that is the bottom. The side here, the bottom, the bottom is where you want to put the creases, where you want the paper to meet. So I'm gonna put this gift upside down because I want the top side of the gift and the plain side of the wrapping paper to be in the same place. So there it goes in the middle. And Katie pushed in just one side, bring the side, yeah, sure enough, bring this side up. Notice how it meets just over half. We gotta tighten it up. Let's level it out here so it's about in the middle. Notice that nice crease there and we're gonna watch that crease and make sure it stays creased. Here's, here is one place that you can use single-sided tape because you won't be able to see it, but it's a great anchor. Tape in those pieces there. Now I want to show this to you guys. Um, on this side, you notice the edge is called a raw edge because you can see the cut. Professionally, it's much better that if instead of just going like this, that you first fold a folded end like so, which means, see how my crease has changed? Notice how I folded it in. Can you see that, Miss Natalie? Yeah, we can see that. Excellent. So now when you fold it in, it's a professional edge, it's a folded edge. It matches all the other folded corners. There's no raw edge, that's important. Now this is double-sided tape, right? Okay, get a double-sided piece of tape. We'll peel it back just a little bit here. There's one. Let me grab the other one really fast. You want two or three pieces of tape, not super huge. The ideal is to put it in several places. More places is better than huger pieces. You don't want to be wasteful of things. Now here's the trick. Hold on to that tape for just a moment, Katie. Actually, can you put it right here? Yep. So if she tapes it all the way to the edge, it's going to be easier to do the end fold. Yep. Now the end fold is kind of going to be kind of like a pyramid. You push in and you push all the way to the box. And then whenever the fold is, that's where you put, and Katie moved that way so they can see. See how there's a crease that looks like a pyramid? You crease both sides. And you see I have a little bit of paper extra here, right? No problem. 
because when you crease the other edge, that side will disappear inside the pyramid. It just all goes into the pyramid and then sharp creases. I'm checking all my crease points, all my creases. Bottom gets taped down first. Bottom first, Katie, get a piece right in here. Yep, there we go. Bottom first. Now I like to always fold in. See this edge right here? See how there's a point on the edge? Yep, we can see that. I like to fold that back so it's a square edge instead of a point edge. And I again, do the same it, thing. <laughs> it's, it's part of that professional finished look. Let me take that and put it right there. I need to redo this one so we do the same thing here. Can you give me a piece of tape for right here? And box wrapping does take a little bit of time. Now notice how this side's a little bit saggy, it's a little bit loose. Here's a trick. If you push down from the other end of the box, carefully pulling it up before you fold the other end, that will tighten up that side. Then we basically do the same thing here. We make in pyramids. And it's easier on the second side because you can use the first side as leverage. Hey guys, you're noticing this isn't that hard, gentlemen. You can do this. If I can do this, you can too. I'm sure the ladies are laughing at how long it's taking me to do this. That's okay. That's We're fine. making something extraordinary. Yep, I hope some some of the uh, Pathfinders are gonna be presenting some beautiful gifts this year. Boys as well as girls. Good. Just some very surprised mums out there, I hope. Mm-hmm. Wait just a second, Katie. Your, your mom and your dad will be extra excited about gifts that are hand wrapped, especially if inside is handmade. That combination is spectacular. Hey, Katie, put the tape right there. And need another one on this side here. Okay. And there we have, see the ends? Yep, beautiful. Nice and crisp. If there's a loose, like I see a loose spot right here. So do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take one final piece of tape and just slide it in that little gap that somehow appeared and just seal it up. It doesn't have to be perfect, Pathfinders, to be extraordinary because you've spent more time, dedication, and focus on this than any bag you ever gave. And the person receiving notices this. For sure. They care. This says they care. Now notice the top is still empty. We need a bow, right, Katie? And stand right over here. Now I have several choices of bows, and we'll make some of these bows in just a moment. Now that's the last one. We're going to make duct tape bows in just a moment. Stand over here, Katie, so I can see you. Which do you think we should use? The little tiny bow tie or the big old deluxe bow? What do you think? Oh, I think or should I use construction size. paper bow. So construction paper, big bow, or bow tie bow. What do you think? Oh, Let's somebody's go. saying big. Somebody's going for the big one. Okay, help me count. Help me count. Which one gets the most votes? Um. Well, Facebook's not. Hold on. Let's get them. Let's see how we're doing. Oh, that, yeah, Facebook's in agreement. We're going with a big one, I'm afraid. And that's what Katie said too. So, big box, big bow. Big box, big bow, I like it. So I took two pieces of double-sided tape. I'm gonna put that right there on the gift. And Katie, can you just smack it down there? There we go. Big box, big bow. See how it's falling. We'll learn how to make this duct tape bow in just a little bit. But ta-da, we are finished. 
So there's another one of our wonderful gifts. Wonderful. This, is the, this is the classic gift fold. Most things in Pathfinders, there, you, have to, you have to wrap a couple of gifts that are odd shaped. But let me tell you, in real life, if there are ways for you to get gifts into boxes before you fold them, you will be a happier person. Boxes are golden when it comes to gift wrapping. <laughs> Try to get it into a box. Okay, that's our last one. Let's put that right there. Okay, next one is just about as easy. And that is the Tootsie Roll, the oh, cylinder. It's easy. Now I used, grab the can and the tissue paper, Katie. The can right there. You have to go crawl for it. I'll grab the tissue paper. Tissue paper is great for this kind of thing. I like to use two layers so you can't accidentally see through it. So I've, I've got these two layers here. I'm gonna take them all the way out. And just like last time, we measure for the gift. I already know because I tested it out last night that this one needs a two seamer, but Katie's right, but you would roll it the other way, Katie. Roll it the other side. Uh, if, she, if she were measuring, you would roll it from one end to the other. Actually, no, you would roll it this way. She had it right. She had it right. So here we go. So red paper out or let's go white paper out. It looks, yeah, this is pretty. So we're going to put the inside up and we're going to put the can. Yes, I went totally Adventist on us. These are Loma Linda Little Links. Oh, fantastic. Now, if I had my choice, I would probably, I would probably get a gift. If somebody wanted to really gift me something special, they would find me a can of Nuttaline or Noodling and gift wrap that for me. I'd be yeah, so that's, happy. That's, that's very controversial in this family. Yes, it usually my, my, is. My yeah, my in-laws love Nuttaline, but um, yeah, my husband and I, we are not keen. <laughs> I knew that as soon as I mentioned it, I knew I was going to have fighting words going on. <laughs> so just like before, we, we put the can down, we find a place to take down, then we finish the other edge. Remember how we fold down to make sure we don't have any raw edges? So I don't have a raw edge here. So I have folded it in so that there's yep. no raw edge. It's a nice finished edge. Okay, Katie, I need some tape. I have to say, my husband taught me about the raw edges. He, he, I never know. I never thought about doing that until I saw him many years ago doing that. So, boys do have the gift of gift wrapping as well. So we put a couple pieces of um, the two sided, and here's really easy. We just simply roll the gift over. And now the fun part, this is 2C roll. So Katie, roll it towards the curve. So roll it towards you. Twist towards you. Yep, not too much because we don't want to break it. And roll towards the curve, so that's towards you. Now the other way. Yep, we always roll towards the fold so that we're folding the same direction. So if we fold it that way, we twist that way. It keeps everything nice and tight. Now, where's our, oh, you've got our, our special, this is a great way. This is our second bow. We're at, this is actually the first one I'm going to show you how to make. So if you have some of this curly ribbon, this is really, really cool. Katie is saying we need the green. Um, green or red? Green. And why is the reason? Because we've already got white on the paper. One of the secrets for ribbons is finding high contrast or a complementary color. And since red and green and white are all complementary, they're all part of the same color family. We want it, we don't want the white. The white would disappear, it'd be hard to see it, but the green we can see. So we're going to get two lengths of ribbon. I, uh, you just have to kind of guess at it. I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to make it about 30 centimeters long or so, yep. We're going to make two of them that are about, the, that are the same length in size. This is curly ribbon. This is called craft ribbon or curling ribbon. We have two pieces of ribbon. 
Now here's really cool. And Katie, Katie helped me figure out the terminology. What kind of shoe, what kind of knot do we use for this? The first part of your shoelace knot. Oh, I love it. That's the first part of your shoelace knot. Not, not to the shoelace stage, but just that knot that goes around to tighten down around your shoe. And you're going to do that twice. The tighten down your shoe knot. Um, Pathfinders know it as the overhand, or if you add an extra twist to it, it becomes the surgeon's knot. And then you tighten things down, make sure it's all good. And then we do the other, other piece right here. This is, I always call this the, the Tootsie Roll um, wrapping. Yeah, that's not a term we're familiar with over here, Mark, but um, Pastor Mark, but there we are. Yeah, I, I do not know. I could not find online a standard name for this, but it is, it creates we, this. We would just give it a cracker shape. There like we go. It. Yeah. So now we're going to make it prettier. See how those ribbons are kind of floofy? They're big. Yeah. We can take scissors and take the sharp um, edge of the scissors, put the ribbon on that sharp edge, take the thumb, and then pull quickly to the end. You may have to do it a couple of times. Nope, gotta grab it. Okay, here, let me daddy finish it up here. But it usually takes two twists on each side. So you take the sharp edge of the ribbon, excuse me, the sharp edge of the scissors, take it to the ribbon, and just do a quick, like so, and it will tighten up. I'll show you in just a moment. I'll show you up nice and close. It is to your ideal if you use the um, the underside or um, faded side of the ribbon, and it will twist it so it's all nice and twisty. See, compare the finished side here with the unfinished side here. Yep. Now you definitely want to go with the finished side. Definitely. Although somebody is saying, and I'm not sure if it's a male or a female, um, what is the point of bows? Bows are considered a finishing touch. They fall into the same category as why do you have your man wear a tie when he goes to church? Uh -huh. um, I'll, or to ask it another way, why is a banana bent? Why does a coconut have a zipper? Doesn't, doesn't, why doesn't it have a zipper? Just because. <laughs> We get used to customs, don't we? Traditions we do. just- well, I, think, I think they make it look very pretty. Yeah, it definitely makes it look finished. Now, come here, come here. So another, uh, actually give me the construction paper, Katie. Let's make our second bow while we're at it. Construction paper? Construction paper. Yeah. The green unfinished one, the totally the one that doesn't have holes in it. He said no. Yeah, that's true. Okay. See how, have you ever taken and made maybe a heart in construction paper by folding it over? You ever done that kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. You can do the same kind to make bows. For example, we have these two bows that we have made with construction paper. No two bows are ever alike when you use construction paper. <laughs> but neither are snowflakes and neither are you God made you special too. So go ahead and make a special bow. So fold your paper in half. The long way I like to say um, hot dog. Um, direction. Hot dogs are an American thing, though. I don't know if. Uh, no, no, we're, we're good with hot dogs. That's that's fine. Over in Germany, they would understand what I was saying, right? <laughs> and so you simply can start. I like to start if I'm wanting a loopy bow. I pretend like I'm start starting making a heart, but then when I get down towards the bottom, I floof out to get it a tail before I come back. And then I'm going to go and cut a hole in my heart, make it more ribbon-like. So it's very much, you notice how similar that looks to a heart, right? It's like a heart with a leg, pair of legs. <laughs> but the result is a bow. Lovely. Yeah, very simple, but it's, it's thought. It's thoughtful. And this one's a little bit, see, I would not end up putting this on here because it's too big. Yeah. Instead, I would choose the more diminutive size one. That's perfect. Or even 
a simple bow tie. If we were looking more formal, if I was yeah. wanting to put, give this to a formal person, that little bow tie in the corner would be perfect. Very good. Okay, so you get the idea how, you, how wrapping is matching the person to the gift from the inside, all, from the outside all the way to the core. So construction paper, you never knew that bow, bow tying could be so easy. So there's your second bow. Okay, Katie, we need, we've done the two easy wrappings. Are you ready for the first challenging wrapping? You ready? Let's go for it. Okay, so here we go. This is not wine. I don't drink wine. Adventists don't go there usually. Um, but instead, this is wonderful Martinelli's um, juice with a little bit of sparkle in it, like so. Now we're going to use, notice the wrapping. On the bottom, that's basically a box fold, right? Yep. See how this is a modified box fold? And on the other end is a Tootsie Roll. So Tootsie Roll on one end, box on the other end. But this one's called, um, oh, I forget the name that are, that are this, is the, this is option C, um, multifaceted. I think that's what they call this one. Multifaceted, you have to do more than one thing. You can't use the same fold or the same technique the whole way through. So multifaceted, one facet, one way to do it here, one way to do it here to combine to make the great gift. Now, how are we doing on time? I have 15 minutes, right? Yeah, you yeah. got 15, 15, 20 minutes, yeah. Okay, I'm in great shape then. I'm gonna take, because, because I don't want raw paper showing very much, notice that the inside of this, there's tissue paper. Do you see that red tissue paper? Yeah, I like that. So this adds a touch to make it less raw. There's not a raw side. Otherwise, this white paper would show out yeah. on the inside of this gift and that would just be not cool um so i'm going to uh where did my tissue paper go my red there it is my red tissue paper uh it's not enough of it i will go off screen for just a moment but i'll keep talking no um, so I have a little bit more tissue paper that's fine Here's my bigger piece i didn't give myself enough pieces today but here we go Couple pieces of tissue paper. Now I've already pre-measured, and you can do the same thing. You roll the you roll the bottle, the the multifaceted object. You roll it from one end to, to the other, like so. And I learned that I needed two 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 frames of the um, of the tissue paper. So I'm going to just do it that way. I already planned ahead. I want to trim things down. Because you can always use unused pieces of wrapping paper for something else. Absolutely. Do not ever throw unused wrapping paper away. Simply stick it in a small box or container. You never know when you might need it later. We have a whole, um, we have a whole box downstairs in our uh, gift in our christmas room. room yes we have a closet that's called the christmas room <laughs> um, whole room that has wrapping paper and and nativity scenes and all such things my wife really enjoys the nativity scenes wonderful and so we we lay again this is the inside we have the wrapping paper here we have the tissue paper here. I intentionally made the tissue paper a little bit longer. And you can even offset it a bit, which I think I'm going to do here because it doesn't matter what's happening on the box wrap end. The floofy end up here is where you want the, the tissue paper to, to shine. So the same kind of thing. That I always forget to do, Mark. So thank you very much for that reminder. It makes things look just a little bit more professional. It certainly does. Okay, so we, again, just like before, we put a couple of pieces of double-sided tape to start it. Pastor Mark, would you be able to just slide that up the table a little bit, just because you're slightly off camera for us? That's How's it, that? perfect. Excellent. Okay, can you grab those scissors there, Katie? And notice I'm putting it so that the bottom fold gets to about half, a little bit more than half. Yep. That's how I'm choosing where to put it on the bottom. 
And because the bottle is circular, as long as the key starts on the back and not on the front of the main label, notice how I started this. I started the, the taping towards the back. Can you see that? Yep, yep, yep. And then I just roll and a little bit of tension on the roll just to make it kind of stay, kind of stay taut, kind of stay stiff. And we get around here to the edge. I do my finished edge just like usual. Notice how some of these things are the same no matter what you're gifting, no matter what the, no matter what wrapping style you're using, many of the techniques are exactly the same, such as the finished edges. Again, I wanna make sure it's tight. Then I take the bottom, I simply turn my pyramids just like I would for a box gift, making my pyramids, making sure no unfinished edges show. Yep. And a couple pieces of double sided tape to finish it off. And don't be surprised, Pathfinders, if this one's a little bit harder and it looks not quite as nice on the bottom. Mine don't usually either, and I've done this a bit. But here's the cool part. When you set it down, it squishes flat and nobody can see it. <laughs> now, Katie, oh, let's, shall we do red this time? Yeah. Let's do red and white together. And here's an advantage of something like, actually, we could do it with this. I'm actually going to go a different way so that we get our third bow in. Um, do you have? I've got yes, the duct tape over here. Right here. Um, I'm using, um, I think it's about 13 millimeters, uh, half an inch or so um, ribbon. And we're going to, um, we're going to tie off this with a bit of ribbon. I choose a length of it. Um, we do the same Tootsie, Tootsie Roll tie as before we tie it off with a different ribbon and then I'm going to add a sunshine bow to it. Sunshine bows are pretty cool. I want this to be long enough so that I can tie so I can tie the other bow into it. So I'm going to just leave a single overhand knot here. We're going to come back to it. Now let's take this. Our goal is to look like this when we're done. See that looks kind of like sun, sunshine rays. This one's easy. You take a length of this half inch ribbon or so. I want to finish up that roll. So we roll it over. Have you ever, um, see how we're rolling it over and just kind of making it, see how that rolls? Am I close enough that y'all can see that? Yeah, that's good. See the loops? I'm just going to take that around until I run out of ribbon. I'm back to a I'm back to a center here. Yep. And here's where I can use, I don't know what they call them there in the UK. Here I call them, I call them um, rubber bands. So you know, that's, like, that's good for us. Okay, so the, the best type are the type that you use for your braces, the little itty bitty ones. So yep. see the little tiny rubber band there? Yep. I use it to set the center, to find the center and secure the center on this. Um, now, you, could you simply tie this on to your, to your bottle, maybe with, and then tie it in and it would be a pretty bow just like that? Absolutely. You could even, once you have it tied onto your bottle, you could kind of move the bows around so they got all poofy. But we're going to do something different. We're going to make them um, sunshine. Now on the end, you can just trim straight across the end. If you're going to give the gift in just the next couple of uh, days or weeks, that's great. If you're afraid that this might sit around for a little while, you wanna actually do like I'm doing here. You want to trim sideways. Because if you put a sideways trim on it like so, it won't unravel quite as quickly. Yep, on, on the diagonal, yep. Uh, yep, on the diagonal, trim on the diagonal. And then once I have 
that, notice that I can then mess around a little bit. Had one end still attached. So mess around a little bit with, with how it's, see how it's gotten a little bit floofy that way? Yep, yep, yep. That's got some style. And then we simply tie it in to our gift, which covers the ribbon, the, the rubber band, because the rubber band is considered unfinished. So we don't want it showing out. We don't want anybody to be able to see the rubber band. So double overhand there and ta-da. Lovely. Pretty cool. And now since we had the tissue paper stick out, which was an improvement, I, I made a mistake earlier and trimmed it too tight. But this one looks even better with the tissue paper showing out, right? Yep, looks yep. great. So that's ready for some special person. Now that leaves the extraordinary. Now, probably the most extraordinary gift you will ever try to um, wrap or give to somebody is a stuffed animal. <laughs> this is a stuffed animal. Notice it's squishy. There's no defined edges. And these are both Katie's dogs that she already knew about. The dog, it's a dog inside here. That's pretty close to looking like the poodle dog there. Wow. This is our last one. Okay, here's the philosophy. Here's the thought, ladies and gentlemen. You always want to get the shape as close to a box or as close to a cylinder as possible. So for, for this sake, no, not until we're all done. For this sake, we're going to use our candy stripe wrapping again. Actually, let's go. Uh, no, we'll save the foil wrapping for later for something else at home because I'm almost out of it. I don't think I have enough. <laughs> the same philosophy. And since it's kind of floppy, you just want to make sure that there's going to be enough and do you think I could make this kind of box shape if I like squished her around a little bit? Yeah, see how that's square? Yep, so yep, yep. I can, use, I can use box folds. I can use the pyramids on her. I will want to leave a little bit more space on the end so I can modify my pyramid. Because she's squishy. She doesn't have the defined edges. So if we get it out around here on either side and make sure that I can fold it around, so I think through my paper and go, okay, that means I need to cut it about out here. If you're lucky, you'll have little lines on your paper. This one doesn't have little lines on the bottom side. So I just have to try to be as straight as possible. It's never fun. It never quite get there, but uh, it all works. Katie, you're going to have to be surprised when you open up that gift. <laughs> she goes, she goes for the... Uh, I, and I had to check with her and say, you know, you can't sleep with this puppy dog last night or the night before, because that's when I was working on these. Until so after the after the event, she's like, I can be okay with that. Oh, well done. What a star. And so notice how we're kind of putting, can you see how I'm kind of squishing the doggy up a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Now here's something that we can't do. We can't anchor the tape because we don't want to tape onto the stuffed animal. No. That's not cool. So we're just going to have to use a little bit more of our finger work which means that I want to do my finished edge before I start to fold. I have to prepare that. I'm going to actually prepare all the edges except for the first one because I am going to be using my fingers a lot more than usual to hold on to that original anchor. So I want to make all my finished edges right here, right now, so I don't have to worry about it later or try to do it when my thumbs are busy. So I'll put the head in. Start it right here, and here's the fun. We basically roll stuff the animal over. Yeah. Notice how we're trying to keep everything tucked and straight, right? And then we bring our finished edge up, keeping everything square. Notice, notice how it looks more like a box than it does anything else. That's good. I had something slip out here. Finished edge slipped out. Get that tucked, keep things tucked, roll it around. Look like it's going to stay. It just might bring up the tape. Get a couple of anchor tapes in there to seal the deal. 
Okay, so that gives us freedom to work now, right? And then I can do the triangles on the end. They're going to be a little bit longer on purpose because I want to make sure that whatever uneven, extraordinary things this stuffed animal might have, that I don't leave it visible. Notice I have to tuck in a little bit more. It's not quite as square or tight folded as it would be if it was a box, because it isn't a box. This is extraordinary. This is way unusual shaped. You have to plan ahead and try to make something work. Okay, and I do the same thing for this side. And the result is a wonderful stuffed creature when we are done with it. And Katie says these are not good under the Christmas tree because you can already tell they're stuffed creatures even before they get under there. <laughs> yeah, I like them though. Okay, I want to show you a duct tape bow in my remaining three or four minutes. Yes, please. I've been looking forward to this one. Okay, duct tape, any color. Did you know there's a whole honor called duct tape? I yeah. found that out, yes. Shameless plug. Did you create that one? Um, no, but I was on the committee that approved it and I convinced my naysayers that it was a good idea because there were a lot of people who weren't sure that was going to be valuable enough for Pathfinders to enjoy. I was like, trust me. I think me. that might be one for next year. So that was, that was part of Michigan Conference, um, a club, the Eau Claire Critters in Michigan um, near, near Andrews University. They, they submitted those requirements. Excellent. And so you take the piece of duct tape and I, I want it so that at the end, and it doesn't have to be perfect, mine isn't, but you push it together. You want the, this part to be about six inches, so about, uh, uh, what's that, 120 um, millimeters or so, give or take a little bit. It's not precision. We're going to end up something like this. That's where we're headed. Okay. Okay, so. Just cut a little bit off there, Mark. Um, I cut a little bit off because that was the raw, that was the raw edge. I wanted to make okay. sure that the raw edge was gone. So now I have square edges on each side. Yeah. This is a folded edge, which is ideal. It's really nice to have the folded edge. I wish I could find a way to get it on both edges, but I haven't found a good way to do it. Now we want to do hot dog fold, so it's long and lean. So see, we're hot dog fold, and then we hot dog fold. We kind of thirds the other two sides so that we're folding away from the hot dog, away from that crease in the middle, okay. but we want to be able to come back to it. So that's, there's thirds on each side of that halfway line. And the table surface is really, really good to have for this one. If you can't manage thirds, halves work. It's just a simpler bow. Yeah, I think we got that. Okay, and then ideally I would have planned this out ahead of time and had already the other piece cut. As it is, I did it. Wow, I'm loving that you're getting rid of the raw edges even on that tiny bit there. Yes, everything you get rid of the raw edges. And on your bow, you notice that your, your big piece of duct tape has raw edges on the long sides. Put those towards the back. So they're, they're, the raw edge is right there. Put it so it's folded towards the back. Take your centerpiece, the small piece of paper, you see that's what, uh, maybe a centimeter wide. Um, put the middle of it on the front. Um, actually, no, sorry. Um, put the middle of it on the top and then roll all the way around. And that way you will get the finished center in your front. It will finish off in the back. So you will have your very own bow. Who knew out of duct tape? Out of duct tape. Talk about a way to show you care. Whenever you can do something <laughs> unusual or unique, it tells the person on the other end that you took the time to care. One last idea I want to share with you. Let's say you had a kid gift. You remember we used that craft paper before? Yeah. Remember the googly eyes? Yep, yep, yep. 
let's say it was a little boy, like say ages four to 12 or so, put a road on top of that craft paper and then um, sticky tape or hot glue gun very lightly, just a little bit of glue, put a car on the road on the top of the oh, fabulous. Treat the car as the bow and you've just made a friend. Is that just made from construction paper? This is construction paper, little pieces of yellow and a big piece of black. Notice I glued two pieces together to get it to be long enough. And Katie, bring me that gift, the googly eye gift. Go grab that one. Let's demo it quickly. And we would, you know, pretending, pretending the googly eye isn't there, pretending that this is the top of the gift, we could put the road right so. We would tuck it under, see how there's a road on your gift now, and then put a little model car right there. Perfect. Glue it all down, tape it all down, and put a little car on the top. Wouldn't that make a cool gift? I love that idea. So there's another, and you can even decorate it. You could make a, a stop, you could take red duct tape, do one of those little bow ties in the corner and it would look like a stop sign. Yeah, perfect. And of course, what Christmas gift wouldn't be complete? Could you make a, could you make a snowflake and attach it as a ribbon? Yeah. Oh. Those are just a few of ideas. If you Google, you will find all kinds of videos. I've simply given you a tool to start. I've showed you four, four ways to wrap. I've showed you three bows. I think I actually showed you four bows. Um, there are many more. There are tons of ways to show that the person that is receiving the gift is special to you and that you thought about them from the very beginning, not just inside. You'll never have to use a bag again because now you can be a real legit gift giver that's planned ahead and thought it through all the way from the beginning to the end. Yeah, and we'd love to see pictures of your gifts uh, for the, maybe for a crit for an end of year gallery. So if we can, oh, no. once you've wrapped your gifts and you've used your bows, you've used your construction paper, we'd yeah. love to see all your creative ideas and please send them in to Pastor Dayan um, and he will put that up on the gallery. We just can't wait to see all of those. Also